hello friends in this tutorial I'll be discussing about the myths about choosing a career now many people think they know the right way to go about picking an occupation but they often wind up choosing a career that is unsatisfying here are some myths of choosing a career along with resources that can help you make an informed decisions the first uh, choosing a career is simple that is actually the first point now actually choosing a career is an involved process and you should give it the time it deserves career planning is a multi-step process that involves learning enough about yourself and the occupations which you are considering in order to make an informed decisions secondly a career counselor can tell me what occupations to pick a career counselor or any other career development professionals can help you what career is best for you. He or she can provide you with guidance in choosing a career and can help facilitate your decisions. Third, that is I can't make a living make a living from my hobby or of my interest so this is also one myth that is when choosing a career it makes perfect sense to choose one that is related to what you enjoy doing in your spare time if you so desire in addition people tend to become very skilled in their hobbies even though most of the skill is gained informally Fourthly, I should choose a career from a best career list. Every year, especially during milestone years, that is the beginning of a new decade, there are numerous articles and books that list what experts predict will be hot jobs. While predictions are often based on valid data, sometimes things change. Way or too often, what is hot this year won't be hot a few years from now. In addition, you need to take into account your interests, values, and skills when choosing a career. Just because the outlook for an occupation is good, it doesn't mean that the occupation is right for you. Fifthly, make a lot of money will make me happy. While salary is important, it isn't the only factor you should look at when choosing a career. Countless surveys have shown that money doesn't really or necessarily lead to job satisfactions. Many people enjoying what they do at work is much more important. However, you should consider earning among other things when evaluating an occupation. Sixthly, when I choose a career, I'll be stuck in it forever. Not true. If you are unsatisfied in your career for any reasons, you can always change it. Many people change careers several times over the course of their lifetime. So these are some of the myths uh, which are to be discussed. Then uh, eighth one is that, or the sorry, the seventh one is missed out. That is, if I change careers, my skills will go waste. So your skills are yours to keep. So you can take them from one job to another. You may not use them in exactly the same way, but they won't go waste. The other point is that if my best friend is happy in particular field, I will be, I too will be. So this is not true because everyone is different and what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. Even if that other person is someone with whom you have lot in common. If someone you know has a career that interests you, look into it but beware of the fact that it may not necessarily be good for fit for you next terms all i have to do is to pick up an occupation things will fall in place after that choosing a career is a great start but there's lot more to do after that a career action plan is a road map that takes you from choosing a career to becoming employed in that occupation to reaching your long-term career goals and finally, there is little I can do to learn about an occupation without actually working in it. While first-hand experience is great, there are other ways to explore an occupation. You can read about it either in print, resource, or online. You can also interview those working in the field. So these are some of the myths which has to be taken care of. Now the tips for successful career planning. The first is that begin with your values. That is, 
before I shall discuss this point, let's uh, have a brief about it. That is, career planning is not an activity that should be done once in high school or in college and then left behind as we move forward in our jobs and career. Rather, career planning is an activity that is best done on a regular basis, especially given the data that the average worker will change careers multiple times over his or her lifetime. Career choices may be more difficult today than at any time in history for three reasons. That is, career definitions are more fluid and changing, and the level of expectations are rising. Most men and women entering the workforce today can expect to change careers three or more times during their working life. The first begin with your values, that is, your values are the emotional anchor of what you do. Satisfying careers are built upon the notion of high correspondence between one's personal values and the work they will be doing. Begin your career search by sorting out your values and writing them down as clearly and succinctly as you can. Secondly, identify your skills and talents. A skill is something you have learned to do. A talent is something you have been born with. So it's important to recognize the difference between the two. You may be skilled at something and still not finding it interest. interesting. Chances are, however, if you are act naturally talented at something, there will be correspondence between that particular talent and your values. Next comes, that is the third one, that is identify your preference. From early on, we approach the world with certain personal preference, how we perceive others, how we think and make decisions, whether we prefer concepts over people or vice versa, and the extent to which we are comfortable with uncertainty in our life. For many, these preferences operate at a subconscious level, but they strongly influence the way you function with others. Fourthly, there is no substitute for experience. The more, the better. It's probably safe to say that nearly every career looks vastly different from the outside than from within. If you're new to a job market and if you're considering a career change, get out and talk to the people who are actually doing it. Take a job in the field or industry and see for yourself it is, if it really all you thought it would be. And finally, become broadly literate. That is, in this high-tech information world, there is incredible pressure to specialize, to know more and more. That's dangerous because it increases your chances of being obsolete immensely. So many people lose their jobs and scuttle their careers because they have gradually developed tunnel visions about who and what they are and what their capabilities are. Learn as much as you can about what interests you and about the jobs and the careers you are considering. Next comes the opt for an experience first and then money. That is, a good way of sizing up several opportunities is to ask yourself which positions will offer me the best chance of becoming excellent what I do. And that may not be the one that pays the highest initial salary. Then the seventh one is aim for a job in which you can become 100% committed. Modest dedications and average performance are unacceptable today. The problem is with downsizing becoming fully acceptable, you aren't likely to discover the truth of that statement until you are out of a job. So, how to protect yourself if you aren't able to commit 100% to what you are currently doing? Start now to find something in which you can. Then, eighth one, build your lifestyle upon around your income, not your expectations. That is a better way to, is to begin right, right with your first job, to structure a lifestyle in, which, um, in such a manner that you can put away 10% of every paycheck. Starting early and investing regularly and wisely are probably two of the greatest secrets of wealth accumulations. Ninth, invest 5% of your time, energy, and money into furthering your career. In terms of a 40-hour week, that's only two hours per, per week. The point is that you cannot rely on your employer to spoon-feed you. Employees today are oriented towards immediate returns on their money. So they will invest in you only when they can see an immediate or relatively quick expensive benefits or their extraordinary potentials. 
and finally be willing to change and adapt your value should not obscure the need to be willing to change and adapt to a new conditions your own growth and developing opportunities the distinction here is that between the directions and plan an ant has a direction but not a plan an ant knows where it wants to go and is willing to turn around back up and change course in order to get there but the ant hasn't written it down or gained concurrence from all other ants the ant just knows with absolute certainty the general direction in which it's heading and that it will get there that's what modern day career direction is all about so this is uh, things for the tips for successful career planning